Hello students, welcome back. We're going to continue with signal transduction part 8. Now we've talked about what the how the beta 1 adrenergic receptor causes an influx of calcium. And you want to always remember this. Okay, let me this this is a general rule that you can always remember. If you have a cell here, let's say there's a cell on the cell A and here we have cell B. If you put a lot of if you put a lot of cations in a cell, that's going to activate a cell or a neuron. That's going to activate. So if you put calcium into a cell or if you put uh, uh, sodium into a cell, if it's a if it's a contracting cell, it's going to contract. Uh, and if it's a non-contracting cell, if it's like a a neuronal cell or an electrical cell, it's going to uh, cause an action potential. So in both cases, it'll cause an action potential that turns the cell on. And so this cell would be on. And if you put a lot of if you put a lot of anions in a cell, if you pump a lot of anions in a cell, or if you pump cations out, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. If you pump out cations or you pump in anions, that's kind of like the same thing. Let's say you have a number 10. And let's say you add the number 5 to the number 10. What would you get? 15, exactly. Now let's say you have the number 10 and you subtract the number. Let's say you subtract a negative 5. What do you get? You still get 15. And so adding a positive is the same thing as subtracting a negative. So pumping, pumping positives out of the cell is the same thing as pumping negatives into the cell. Makes sense? And so in both cases, cell B is going to be off and cell A is going to be on because you're pumping in pluses. What else could you do to to A to turn it on? Pump out negatives, exactly. So it makes sense. So that's a real general principle. It, it, it works in a lot of cases in, uh, in biochemistry. When we talk about biochemical pathways, if you want to turn a cell on, you know, add some positives to it. And that kind of makes sense. You know, if you have more plus, then you'll be on. If you have, you know, if you're negative, then you'll be sad and minus. Okay, so we've talked about the beta-1 adrenergic receptor. Okay, and now we're going to, let's talk about how the, now is the beta-1, is the beta-1 stimulatory or inhibitory? Was it? It's stimulatory. What cation do we add to the cell with beta-1? What cation do we put into the cell with beta-1? Calcium. At the very end, we put calcium in. That's the whole, that was the whole point of it. That's how you turn that cell on. Now, let's talk about alpha-2. Is alpha-2 stimulatory or inhibitory? Hmm. Inhibitory. So, in order to, so should we turn... Should we turn a cell that has alpha 2? Should we turn that cell on or should we turn it off? We should turn it off. Now there are two ways to turn it off. What are those two ways? What are two? No, no. No, no, we're talking about that's Paris. How okay, how did we turn the beta how did we turn the beta 1 on? What did we do to it at the very end? The beta 1. We add beta 1 to the heart. How do we turn the heart cell on? I know, but what, what happened at the very end of that signal transduction pathway? Calcium came in, so we added a plus to the cell. Now we're talking about alpha 2, which is an inhibitory. There are two ways to turn it. It's, it's supposed to be off. What are the two ways to turn it off then? Exactly. We could add a negative to the cell or take out some positives. Okay, does the general principle make sense? Okay, now, very good. Now, let's do that. So let's draw ourselves a, ourselves a cell here. Okay. Okay, let's 
Cash Jar Sale. Okay, and in that sale, I'm going to put here. I'm going to put this in one folder here because I want to do some things with this. In this sale, let's put our receptor. I'm going to zoom in here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Bless you. Okay. Now, what is our ligand going to be here? It, okay. What's the, what receptor did we say this was? Alpha two. It's an inhibitor. Correct. Say. So, what is that? What? Give me a ligand that we could add to this. No, acetylcholine is parasympathetic. Has to be norepinephrine, norepinephrine or epinephrine. So here we're going to have, we'll put nor epi. Okay, so now nor epinephrine is going to bind to this alpha 2 adrenergic receptor. then this receptor is going to become activated. Okay, now such receptors like this, we can give them, what are these types of receptors called that go through the membrane like this? Exactly, they're called seven pass They're called seven pass transmembrane receptors. What's another name for these receptors? No, not cholinergic. Cholinergic goes with cholinergic goes with parasympathetic. This is all sympathetic because we're adrenergic. What type? Yeah, we could yep, yeah, it is an adrenergic receptor, so. A general, the general name for receptors that have this shape. Seven pass transmembrane receptors. Muscarinic is parasympathetic. That's acetylcholine. G protein coupled receptor. These seven pass receptors always couple with G proteins. Seven pass transmembrane receptor. And G protein coupled receptor is the other name for this class of receptors that go through the membrane a lot of times. Now, there is one other name for this receptor that I have not given you all yet. Okay. Now, if you look at this receptor here, look at the shape of this receptor. See how this receptor goes in and out and in and out. And I told you that this receptor had the name of an animal. What animal has this type of shape? A snake, exactly. So we can also call these, well, snake-like receptors, but that's not the word. The word, what's another word for a snake? A serpent, exactly. So we call these serpentine receptors. So three names for the same receptor. Question. The second one is G-protein coupled receptor coupled and they always coupled with a G protein so seven pass transmembrane receptor is the same thing as a G protein coupled receptor is the same thing as a serpentine receptor everybody okay with those now let's see here okay so once no epinephrine binds then it's going to activate this receptor here. The receptor is going to become active. Now, a protein from the inside is going to come and join with this receptor. What protein is it going to be? Exactly, a G protein. Very good. And so the G protein has how many parts to it? Three. And so here we're going to have, I'm going to put, I'm going to put beta here. I'm going to put. 
exactly. And I didn't even tell you. Exactly. It's going to be a G inhibitory protein. G inhibitory is, is linked to alpha 2 and it's also linked with the acetylcholine receptor. Remember that from before? Okay. And so this is going to be beta inhibitory and then here's going to be gamma inhibitory. And the other protein is going to be of course alpha inhibitory. And so what's going to happen? Alpha, beta, and gamma are going to come to the membrane and this protein in alpha is going to is going to lose G what is alpha going to lose? No, it's going to it's going to something else is going to happen before it loses beta and gamma. Exactly. It's going to gain a GDP, a GTP, excuse me. And so what's going to happen next? Alpha is going to gain a GTP. Okay. So, let's look at the steps again. Norepinephrine is going to bind the alpha 2 alpha 2 adrenergic receptor. The receptor is going to become active then Yes. Then beta and gamma. Well, let's let's do let's do all of the steps. Let's make sure you have all of the steps. Let's do it this way. Okay. Step one. Norepinephrine is going to bind to the alpha two alpha the alpha two adrenergic receptor. Next, the receptor is going to become. Let's see if I can find that one. It's going to become active. That's step two. Step three. GDP, well it's GDP first, GDP, G protein is going to come to the membrane, then it's going to exchange GDP for GTP, okay, then the next step, what's going to happen next? Nope, not alpha and gamma. You lose beta and gamma. Beta and gamma goes away. Okay, what's the next step? Okay, what is that going to be? So alpha, exactly. Alpha inhibitory is going to bind to. Let's put G alpha here. Alpha inhibitory is going to bind to this protein here. What's the name of this protein? protein? No, that's a G protein over here. What's the name of this protein I'm drawing? Adenylalcyclase. Exactly. And so normally, let's see here. What does adenylalcyclase do normally? Exactly. Well, it doesn't turn it on, but it actually creates it. And so what's going to happen here? Adenylalcyclase is going to take, is going to catalyze the conversion of ATP into cyclic AMP. Okay. Now, what does the cyclic AMP do? Okay. So this is cyclic AMP. So cyclic AMP is then going to activate, I'm going to get another color here, it's going to activate, I'm going to put a plus there, it's going to activate protein kinase A. Then protein kinase A. We don't know what cell we're in now, so I'm not going to worry about this. 
well, I can just put it here. Protein kinase A is then going to phosphorylate. We start out with these channels here. These ion channels. And normally these ion channels they're going to be closed. So these ion channels start out closed. And so any ions that are out here, they can't go inside. But when protein kinase A, wow, that's going to sound awful on me. Let's do that. Let me turn this off. That's going to sound awful on the video, but those things happen. Okay. When protein kinase A phosphorylates, so what's going to happen, the protein kinase A is going to phosphorylate here. So you're going to have phosphates now on here. And when these phosphates get onto this channel, then the channel Makes sense to you. Okay. Then the channel is going to open up, and when the channel opens up, then then these ions that are on the outside, the the cations specifically, now the cations can come inside of the cell. Now the cell has more positive charges and that turns the cell either on or off. Which one does it do? Turns it on. And so that's what would happen. That's what would happen in a normal situation. But, and this should make all of the sense in the world now, but if you have an inhibitory protein, but since this is G alpha inhibitory, the G alpha inhibitory is going to is going to inhibit adenylylcyclase. So adenylylcyclase activity is going to go, is going to go, is it going to become greater or less? Less, exactly. And what about cyclic AMP level? More or less? Less cyclic AMP. What about protein kinase A activity? More or less? Less. What about these open, are these ion channels going to be more open or more open or less open? Less open. And that turns the cell off. Question. Well, well, you can think it, it just blocks it partially because it, it just depends on how much norepinephrine is there. If there's a lot of epinephrine there, then it's going to block it even more. So it's a partial blockage. If you have enough epinephrine, it can almost completely block it. Does that part make does that make sense? This is just the opposite of beta one, so this shouldn't make all the sense in the world. Yes, question. Excellent question. The question was so epinephrine works with stimulatory receptors and norepinephrine works with inhibitory receptors. That's an excellent question. However, that is not the case. That's not the case. Because what happens, you have epinephrine and norepinephrine, they do the same thing. But you just have, you have different receptors in different places. So on the heart, the receptor is going to be a stimulatory receptor. And so if you're under a sympathetic response, you're going to stimulate your heart. But uh, on the, on the uh, blood vessels that, that give blood to your legs, they're going to have inhibitory receptors because you want those muscles to relax so they can open the blood vessels up so you can get more blood to your muscles in your leg. And so it's not the, it's not the, the ligand that changes, it's the receptor that changes on different parts of the body. And that's what gives you, that's why a sympathetic response can be to inhibitory receptors in some places and stimulatory receptors in the other place. It just depends on where you are in the body. 
No, 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 no. Yeah, see, norepinephrine and epinephrine do the same thing, basically. Norepinephrine just comes out of nerve endings. It just comes out of nerve endings. So if you have a nerve going right to the heart, it's just going to release that norepinephrine from that nerve ending, and then the heart is going to beat faster. And that's a real specific response. Exactly, because epinephrine comes from the adrenal gland, and so it goes into circulation and goes all over the body. Because if, if a dog is running after you, you want every part of your body to do what it needs to do to get away from the dog. You, can't, you, you can have specific responses sometimes, but when there's a sympathetic response, you need everybody to do their jobs immediately. Yeah, epinephrine is a stronger activator. It's stronger. Think about it like that. And, and when we start talking about looking at the structure versus the function of these different uh, adrenergic agonists, you'll, you'll start to see why epinephrine can do more, a little more, than norepinephrine. Everybody okay with this? Now, there's one thing about this one that I didn't, that we could not talk about before. Okay? Let's see if we can find. I tried to label things as I went along. So this is PKA. Hope this is it. Let me see. Oh, there's a channel right there. I don't know what that is. Let me just do one more thing here. And then it's the closer. Okay, let's go down and find someone that we threw away. Who did we throw away in all of this? Who did we throw away and didn't even give, a, give them a chance to do anything? Beta gamma, exactly. But beta gamma have a job. But we never talk about what they could do. Now we're going to. We're going to tell you what beta and gamma do. Okay? In the cell, in this cell here, you're going to have another channel. Uh, let's put this channel, let's just put it all the way over here. It's kind of out of the way. So we have a channel here in this cell. Oh, my, my writing is way too thick. Okay. I'm going to make this channel here. I'm just going to just color it here. Okay. Okay. Here's our channel. And under normal situations, Let's call this channel 2. We'll give the name of it next. Uh, on the normal situations, this channel itself is going to be it's going to be closed. So this channel is going to be closed up here. Okay. So this channel is closed. And what this channel does, in the cell, there are K... In the cell, there are potassium ions. You can think of your cells as bags of potassium. Your cells have lots and lots of potassium in them. Lots and lots of potassium in them. And so what's going to happen in this situation, now, beta and gamma inhibitory, do you think, do they want to inhibit the cell or stimulate the cell? They want to inhibit the cell because their name tells you beta inhibitory, gamma inhibitory. So what's going to happen, the beta and gamma are going to move over to this potassium channel here. And when they get to that potassium channel, they're going to open that potassium channel. They're going to open the potassium channel. The potassium channel is going to open. And then the potassium is going to rush out of the cell. It's going to rush out of the cell. Now, is that going to turn this cell on or is it going to turn this cell off? off? It's going to turn it off because you're losing even more cations. So, so alpha-2, the G inhibitory protein does two, inhibits in two ways. It stops the it stops the calcium from coming in and it causes the potassium to go out and so that makes the cell even more polarized it makes it hyperpolarized more negative negative. and when you make the cell more negative you turn the cell off and that's how alpha 2 
Um, that's how alpha-2 receptors inhibit cells. I'm going to let everybody write this down. Then I'm going to go through the whole process again, explaining things. Because I want you to be able to just listen. Does it kind of make sense? Beta-1 turns the heart cells on by adding calcium to them and by adding sodium. Alpha-2 turns cells off by, uh, by not allowing calcium to come in and by getting rid of potassium, getting rid of the Get, getting rid of the plus charges. It's a general principle. If you just understand the principle, it'll always help you when you're talking about signal transduction and any signaling event in the cell. Okay. While you all are writing, I'm going to be labeling some things. That's going to help me with my explanation. Okay, let's go through the whole process. I'm going to move some things back. Okay, close that back. Close that. Going to get back to our get back to our normal situation. This is why things always seem to go bad. I should have done something right here. This is good, but we're going to do one thing better here. This GA. J. Okay, one of these needs to be a GTP, a GDP. So let's turn this one into a GDP erase. So we're going to start out with a GDP. Okay, and let's give it another color so we can. Well, no, it's different. G D P. Okay, I think we're ready. Let's go through the whole process now. So, what's going to happen first? First thing is going to happen, a sympathetic response is taking place. So what's going to happen, norepinephrine is going to bind to the alpha-2 adrenergic receptor. And so we want to inhibit this cell. We want to inhibit this cell. Once that happens, then the receptor is going to become active. Notice here the receptor now is on. And so now what's going to happen, GDP, the G protein, That's that. Where's beta gamma? Beta gamma, there it is. It needs to be like with this. Okay. Yes. So we're going to have this and this. Yes, there we go. All of this, GDP, beta gamma, beta gamma are going to go to the membrane. And now, GDP. Uh, the G protein is going to become activated. What's going to happen to that G protein? Exactly. You're going to change G, G T, GDP to GTP. What's going to be the next thing that's going to happen to this G protein? You're going to lose beta and gamma. Beta and gamma are going to go away. Okay. Now let's work with G out with G, with alpha first. So the G the alpha unit is going to go where? Adenylyl cyclase, and then when it gets adenylyl cyclase, it's going to turn adenylyl cyclase off. You're going to have less cyclic AMP, less protein kinase A activity, and no phosphorylation. There's going to be no phosphorylation of this calcium channel, so this calcium channel does not open, so it remains closed, so calcium can't come in, and so this cell, this cell remains off. Does that part make sense to everyone? 
Next thing is, now what is the beta gamma going to do? The beta gamma is going to go to the potassium channel here. And when it goes to the potassium, well, first, potassium is on the inside. I should have done that already. Potassium is on the inside. The beta gamma goes to the potassium channel. What is, what is it going to do to that potassium channel? It's going to open that potassium channel. So that potassium channel is going to open up. And now the potassium is going to go where? Outside the cell. And so is that going to turn this cell on or off? Turns the cell off. And that's how, that's how the alpha-2 adrenergic receptor turns cells off. And we already know how the beta-1 beta turns cells on. What's left? What other receptor is there left? How have we not talked about? We've talked about, we talked about beta-1. We've talked about alpha-2. What else is left? Alpha-1 and beta-2. Uh, alpha-1 is not, we'll talk about it next, we'll talk about it later, but the one that's really of interest, I don't know if I should even do this one today. Uh, we did beta-1. We did alpha-2. We haven't done alpha-1. Alpha-1 is really important. Oh, let me tell you where alpha twos, alpha twos are found. Remember, alpha two was one of those exceptions. Remember, a cell is either alpha one if it's simulatory, and it's beta two if it's inhibitory. But it can be alpha two in three exceptions. Those are three exceptions for alpha two. But we're only going to talk about the one one exception for alpha two, and that's going to be at presynaptic nerve endings. And we're going to talk about this more later. And so this location here is a presynaptic nerve ending. Okay. Okay, if you all would close your notes. No, no, quit. I'm just going to ask you some questions, see if you understand things. Okay. I want you to say these answers out strong so we can hear you there. What is another name for a seven pass transmembrane receptor? A G protein coupled receptor. What is another name? Serpentine or serpentine receptor. Very good, very good. Uh, the alpha 2 adrenergic receptor, is it an inhibitory receptor or a stimulatory receptor? It's an inhibitory receptor. Which G protein is associated with the alpha 2 adrenergic receptor? G inhibitory. Very good, very good. Uh, if you if you, now this wording is going to sound strange, but I'm saying it right, but it's going to sound strange. If you stimulate the alpha-2 adrenergic receptor, what ion does not come into the cell? If you stimulate the alpha-2 adrenergic receptor, what ion does not come into the cell? Calcium does not. Okay. Uh, if you stimulate the alpha-2 adrenergic receptor, what ion does leave the cell? Potassium. What protein is responsible for uh, causing the potassium to leave the cell? Beta gamma G inhibitory. Very good. You all have a great weekend.